Iconic video game developer and publisher Blizzard Entertainment is re-entering a partnership with the Chinese internet technology company NetEase to help bring Blizzard's games to the Chinese market. This after a dispute over intellectual property rights was settled by both NetEase and Activision Blizzard's parent company, Microsoft. Let's talk about that with former Blizzard developer and executive Mark Kern, or Grums, as he's known on social media, here on That Park Place Podcasts online, or as we like to say, T3PO. Here we go. All right. NetEase shares rise on report that Blizzard China partnership is back. Uh, and this is interesting for a reason that's not quite obvious immediately. We'll explain and then uh, we'll let Grum's outro by uh, giving us his thoughts on this. This is by Ambar Warwick out of investing.com. It says shares of Chinese video game company NetEase rose on Tuesday amid local media reports that the company was close to resuming. Uh, hold on just a second, guys. Resuming its partnership with Blizzard Entertainment, bringing the latter's games back into China. Hong Kong shares of NetEase rose as much as 5%, outpacing a 0.6% increase in the Hong Sing Index. Chinese media reports showed that Blizzard Entertainment, which was taken over by Microsoft in late 2023, was in talks to restart its Chinese servers by as soon as April 10th, resuming its partnership with NetEase after more than a year-long break. All right, so everybody's happy, right? Happy, happy. Let's get down to this paragraph, though, because this is the part that is interesting and deserves conversation. NetEase is expected to clock higher revenues from publishing Blizzard's games, which are wildly popular in China when they're available. The firm also recently partnered with Walt Disney Company's Marvel Games to develop a new superhero shooter for release in 2024 called Marvel Rivals. Well, what is that, you say? Well, take a look at this out of PC Gamer. This is by Andy Chalk. Marvel Rivals is a 6v6 hero shooter. Never heard of one of those before, have you? In development at NetEase, testing begins in May. We won't show the video, folks, but guess what? If we were to read this, it turns out that you can play all of these cool characters like Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Groot Hulk, Iron Man, etc. And if you look at this, we'll zoomify it so you can see it really well. It looks very, very similar to Overwatch. And so what is interesting about this is that NetEase, because they didn't have Blizzard anymore in China, they partnered with Marvel. They made an Overwatch competitor. Now. Blizzard is owned by Microsoft. Microsoft renews the relationship with NetEase in China, gets Blizzard back into China. And now NetEase is in a situation where they're going to be not only putting out a 6v6 shooter that is a rival to Overwatch, but they're also going to run Overwatch, which is now a 5v, uh, 5v5 shooter competing with its own self inside the Middle Kingdom. Grums, your thoughts on this strange situation? Well, first of all, I think that uh, Blizzard has always played hardball at the business level. I certainly did with Chinese companies uh, when I was out there uh, picking, helping to pick who was going to publish uh, World of Warcraft. So when you have the power, you use it, right? And Blizzard was never shy about, um, um, you know, uh, going in there and leveraging as much as possible to get the best deal they can. So I'm not surprised that they were willing to walk away and then come back and do another deal uh, starve them out a little bit and, and, you know, and, and, and get it going again on more favorable terms. Uh, the shooter aspect, the hero shooter aspect, I think in the West, um, uh, I think that's dying out. I think people are more interested in co-op play now than the toxicity around, uh, and, uh, the sweaty try hardness of, of, of these hero shooters. So I wonder how that's going to do in China because I haven't had any on the ground information in China for a while. I don't know how the genre is doing there. Having IPs that go ahead or game types, genres that go head to head. Um, Hey, if you can do it, that's great because one of them's going to win and you hold both of them. Uh, do I have hope for any Marvel IP? No. <laughs> well, who's developing it? Is Nettie's developing the Marvel uh, one or is is a, is a U.S. company? So as far as I know, Nettie's is the one behind the behind the uh, mobile version as well. Yeah, so they'll they'll basically um, clone Overwatch and and reskin it as a start, and then they'll add their monetization on top. But well, China's that, a very was uh, Diablo Immortal as, as well, right? That was Nettie's. That yeah, wasn't. They, so. Yep, they did Diablo Immortals. Uh, and so I think they'll do a very good looking shooter. I think that it will have a lot of the feel, uh, because they have direct access and they'll be, <laughs> they're going to reverse engineer as much of overwatch as they can. And they probably had access to all the code, right? By hosting. It no, no, no. Uh, no, they would not have access. 
at least when I was there, we were very careful. We even went as far as to have our data server cabinets locked remotely so that local staff could not open them without asking first. So now that's a, uh, that's an a, in the weeds kind of question, Grums, but let's end on that. Are you saying then that Blizzard, if they gave a game to a Chinese company that's going to have to be the majority stakeholder because that's what's uh, required in China to have those games, are you saying that Blizzard would then have the ability or Activision Blizzard would have the ability to encrypt all of that such that that company who's hosting it on their servers would not have access? Well, to I was, look, I was very much in favor of this and we, we went through extensive lengths to encrypt stuff, to put it behind lock cabinets, to install fire suppression so that, you know, they wouldn't have to open the cabinets if there were a fire in the data center. We went through extensive lengths because IP theft is, is a very real thing. Um, I don't know if they still do that now, but I, uh, but I would, if I were still there, I'd be like, you know, I would make it as, as remote operated and protected as possible. Wow, that's an awesome, I, I had never thought of that. I'd never even thought about the, uh, the contrast there of what do you do when you're the minority stakeholder in your own game, but it has to be that way to get it in China. And what are the ramifications for code protection? That highlight was from the pro show where the full replay can be found on his channel exclusive to members. A very special thanks to Grums for joining us on that special edition of The Pro Show for those excellent insights. Be sure to let us know in the comments below what you think about what was discussed today, and we'll see you here again on T3PO. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro. The Pro Show and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.